Well, for more what's on what's ahead, Frank Sesno joins me from Los Angeles. He's the executive director of the Alliance for Sustainable Future at George Washington University. Um, Frank, I know it's only January, but is this nomination pretty much a done deal for Donald Trump? Uh, barring a strike of lightning, it looks that way. <clears throat> you know, I've covered a lot. We've watched a lot of uh, uh, campaigns and elections and primary seasons, and we haven't seen one like this. Trump wins overwhelmingly in Iowa, then comes to New Hampshire, wins overwhelmingly there. Nikki Haley says she's going to stay in it. But I think one of the most telling statistics out of the exit polls <clears throat> that we saw was that about 8 in 10 of Trump voters say they strongly favor him. About 3 out of 10 Haley voters say they strongly favor her. So he's got the momentum and he's got the enthusiasm. And that's really important in these primary and caucus contests. So right now, the way things look, he's all but unstoppable. And I thought it was remarkable that according to exit polls, Trump did well across nearly every Democratic group, won every age group among men and women. How do you explain that, Frank? Among Republicans. Because he's remade the Republican Party in his image, and a lot of the people who were uncomfortable with what the Republican Party uh, have, has become, have left and become independents, or Democrats maybe, I doubt that, but certainly independents. So that's where this election is going to swing. The, neither one of these candidates, if you ask the national, you know, in national po uh, polling, um, have a, a lot of support. Trump has a lot of support in the Republican Party. Biden has support in the Democrat Party. Um, but it's, he hasn't got the base by any means that Trump has got. Yet that seems inevitably where we're headed. Another Trump-Biden showdown. And for Trump, it's going to be to motivate his base to get them out. For Biden and the Democrats, it's going to be because Biden doesn't have that big base. It's going to be to frighten them about what Donald Trump uh, could could represent and to get the, the, the anti-Trump vote as much as anything else. And we're going to have months of that now coming from both sides. And I thought it's interesting that the majority of Americans don't want a rematch between Trump and Biden. And yet, this is exactly where that's headed. It's exactly where this is headed. And so what does that mean? That means the turnout is going to be really key if both candidates have such high end favorables. How do you get people to the polls who are in the middle? And those people who are in the middle, and there aren't very many of them, a mere 44,000 votes last election in those key swing states could have changed the outcome. Most people are pretty much set in concrete right now. So given the, the, the relative unpopularity of both candidates, how do you get those precious people in the middle to show up and vote again? So that's a lot of what this is going to be about. Is there any possibility that Trump's uh, win in Iowa and New Hampshire, and who knows what's going to happen in South Carolina and moving forward, will that translate into general elections come November, Frank? Uh, the trend, which trend? I'm, sure, I'm not sure I understood that. Well, I mean, he's already done really well in Iowa caucuses. He obviously won New Hampshire. Is his victory going to pull him to the general election for another victory? I mean, does one thing necessarily translate into general elections in November? Yeah, I don't think we can extrapolate from what's taken place in the Iowa caucuses in New Hampshire primary to what the general election will be. The country changes very much. The dynamic of the campaign and what candidates are saying, and more importantly, what the public is paying attention to, changes very much when it comes down to the two candidates head to head in the general election. I there are so many unknowns here on the Trump side, his legal problems, uh, you know, how having him back center stage really plays with the general electric, general electric. And Biden's issues, uh, his relative unpopularity and the border issues and the Middle East and all the rest. So, uh, no, the, the dynamic, I think, is going to be very fluid over these coming months. And it's going to change quite a bit, potentially. And how hard will it be for Nikki Haley to keep fighting? Very hard. <laughs> very hard. Where does she go? Where does the money come from? What does she say? What's her trajectory? Where does she win? So what, why is she in? So just as uh, DeSantis dropped out shortly after Iowa because reality knocked on the door, reality's banging on the door with Nikki Haley after New Hampshire. If she, if she, you know, the next big stop would be her home state. She should be competitive there. According to most all the polls, it's not even close. Does she really want to be um, 
insulted by her own state. So she's going to have to think about that, too. And what future she has in the Republican Party, if, as the Republican Party is now constituted, she continues to hang around and attack Trump, and he continues, which he will do, to savage her. All right, we'll leave it there. Frank says no. Thank you very much.